Chapter 3 Sam Enters the Dragon A pale-faced boy with limp, white, blonde hair appeared beside Sam. He looked sickly. He was a few years younger than Sam, and stood strangely erect. In a flat voice, he said, I am ready now, sir. Sam laughed to herself. Strange thing to say. Everyone was ready, more than ready. The thin man nodded, offered a wafer-thin smile. Noted, he intoned, drawing out the vowel sounds. However, there have been disturbances, difficulties with the satellites, computer malfunctions. He pointed a bony finger upward, beyond the clouds, to deep space. Please stand by. We apologize for any inconvenience. The pale boy stood by as requested. It won't be long the thin man added. He pressed a forefinger to his ear and closed his eyes as as if listening to a message. After a moment, the man unfolded his long limbs like a giant mantis and stood before the crowd. With a hand to the side of his mouth, he announced, Welcome to the grand opening of the Dragon Tooth, the single greatest ride in the world's greatest amusement park, Dr. Z's Adventure Park. The crowd burst into applause. A large man in a too-small shirt put two fat sausage-like fingers in his mouth and whistled. A painted expression appeared on the face of the man in the black suit. He signaled for silence. Before we begin, please, a word. He glanced at the words scribbled on a scrap of paper in his hand, then returned the paper to his jacket pocket. Adventure Park was established eleven years ago by Phineas Z. Overstreet. The man coughed once and continued. Mr. Overstreet was a sickly child who spent long hours in solitude. To ease his loneliness, he read vicariously and tinkered with computers. He earned his first million by age 12 with the invention of a popular video game. By the time he was 17, his company, Z Games, had become the largest, best-selling game company in the world. At 32, Phineas Z. Overstreet was the wealthiest man on the planet. And he was bored, bored with work, bored with meetings, bored with money. So, he built his greatest game of all and called it Adventure Park. The crowd applauded. The rides featured cutting-edge technology, innovative designs, and, ah, yes, the most terrifying thrills. Today, you will witness Dr. Z's greatest achievement. A ride that goes beyond anything the world has witnessed. His eyes turned to Sam's direction. Am I correct to assume that you have a winning ticket? Sam placed the ticket in the man's hand. He ripped it in half and left the pieces flutter to the ground. But when Sam's parents also moved forward, he raised an open palm. The ticket is for one rider only. Yes, of course, Mrs. Carver said. But we figured we could step inside to... Incorrect! False! The man snapped. You are mistaken. Mrs. Carver put a hand on Sam's shoulder. Can't we go inside just to watch? No, that would be impossible, the man replied. Imprudent. Immaterial. Impractical. The ride is not on the premises, actually. Not on the what? He bent forward at the waist, hands clasped behind his back. He whispered, Mr. Overstreet would have me sacked in an instant, kicked to the curb, if I were to allow you inside. You must understand, he is fiercely protective of industry secrets. But I can say this. First, there is a brief shuttle that will transport your daughter to the ride itself, which is at a different location. I don't under- Mom, it's okay, Sam interrupted. She appealed to her father. Tell her, Dad, I'll be fine, really. Her parents exchanged glances. Their daughter? Alone? Unwatched? She will be quite safe, the man purred. You'll need to sign the standard paperwork, waivers and such, for insurance purposes. Of course, if you wish to forfeit the ticket, I'm sure others will happily take her place. So it was decided. The man unhooked a chain, opened a door, and Sam stepped inside. The line inched forward. A total of sixteen riders entered the building. The boy was among them, his skin as white as Elmer's glue. All of the riders were children. Sam didn't look back at her parents, didn't wave goodbye. Instead, 
full of anticipation, she walked into the cavernous room, excited, hopeful, not the least bit fearful of the dangers that would soon fall from the sky.